Wilson Morales from Black from the TV. Hello, folks. How's it going? Good. How are you? So, Riley, you know, did you get a chance to talk to Rebecca before her passing to get an idea as to how you guys were going to frame the series? I did not get a chance to speak to her, sadly. Um, she passed short, very shortly after I signed on. But um, Quinn, uh, who's one of the creators of the show, uh, had been, you know, very, very close to her. So the whole the show and the story and the casting and the arc and everything, I think Rebecca had uh, signed off on. Yeah, uh -huh. Rebecca knew that Riley was going to be playing her and that was the way that she wanted it from the get go. For you, Lily, you know, when you come in, I don't know, I didn't read the book. I don't know if your character is a composite or if it's somebody in real life. How did you want to portray it, you know, as far as what she's go what the character has gone through in a book? Because it seems like everybody in this story, in this series, is looking to find identity, you know, to establish themselves, mm -hmm. whether it's Riley's character coming home. Uh, your character of being on a force and dealing with a lot. And then there's the, you know, the teenagers. Right. No, Cam is the only completely fictionalized character in this and is an amalgam. There was a female officer that arrested the character, Josephine Bell. Um, name's been changed for her privacy. But um, yeah, there was one line that was taken from that original character and the fact that she was one of the only women on the force at the time. Otherwise, Cam is complete a complete creation. And I was really grateful that there was, and I was hoping when I saw that it was an indigenous cop and then learning that she was adopted into this family, became a cop kind of by circumstance. I was hoping there would be the arc and the room to have that conversation I think that intersection is really appealing to a lot of people, which is why you see a lot of women indigenous cop characters on television. <laughs> this one I was really, this one I was excited about because my suspicion was confirmed in the arc. I get to have a real conversation with myself about that, what that inequity is, um, what my position on the force is as the only woman, as an indigenous woman, investigating a crime that, you know, she's the one who and this is part of the fictionalization of it, but is effective. She's the one who has the um, the insight and the instinct to even look into it, that she's haunted by it first in a way that I think she's conditioned not to, but her humanity overrides that. And um, the journey she goes along the way that she has to self-reflect and where she lands at the end, I thought was a really important conversation to have. I also felt like it was necessary to, in some way, bring an Indigenous character into this narrative because this crime happened under a bridge that connects the municipality to uh, First Nations Reserve in Canada. Um, it was very, very close to, um, to to Native lands. I mean, it's all Native lands, but that was that was an element in the law enforcement aspect of it as far as jurisdiction goes anyway. Um, just the fact that it's a story about a missing girl, to not have any Indigenous comment in that narrative, it's disproportionately Indigenous women are the largest population of missing and murdered unsolved cases. So to have a woman on the force who's Indigenous opened up uh, the kind of conversations I would want to have with this, this type of narrative. For, to wrap it up, Riley, you know, when you think about Rebecca, as she's talking with the girls and, the, and everybody in there, do you think she was trying to find a way to humanize all of these individuals as opposed to seeing these people as one-sided? I think that she was um, wanting to, yes, I think she was trying to find the humanity um, within the this event. Um, and spending the time with the pe with the people and with all of the children and um you know and and it 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 brings quite it brings up conversations and in a lot of the later episodes that i find to be extremely important um and themes you know i i think that the way she goes about it is uh you know can be a, a bit reckless at times and um i think that that's also something that's uh very common in 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 uh storytelling and and telling other people's stories and i think that um there was a, an awareness of that <laughs> um and i liked that um but yeah I, I think ultimately what she's looking for is humanity in herself and in um this incident and uh yeah 
congrats on the series. Let's see how far it goes. I think people want to hear these stories. We're getting a lot of true crime stories, and that's fascinating, people. So here's another one. Let's hope it starts sparks conversation. You know, because even though this is set in the '90s, today's world, you can still talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take care, folks. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Wilson. Mm -hmm. Wilson Morales from Black Women TV. Hey, folks, how's it going? It's going good. How you doing? You know, when you take on these roles who are basically real life characters, what do you do to get into the mindset to play vividly so that we can we're convinced that these characters are who they are as opposed to seeing you guys? Chloe? Yeah, for me it was definitely making um making it your own. You know, we are betraying real real people, but mm -hmm. um diving into who you think it is is really important because it reflects on your, you know, your character when people watch it. And so I feel like having that ground of you in it, but you know, not really, but just taking um your your past and yeah. diving into your actual character was really important for me. Yeah. And I think really just like stepping into that zone as well. You know, like for me, I'm super big on 90s music. So like I liked a lot of like, you know, Goody Mob, Outcast um and and just music like that so that that definitely helped with it a little bit too you know like being able to step into the character and then the research of it all as well so how much research did you do outside of the script so that when people see this and they know you're portraying they're gonna say okay that is so dumb as opposed to like that is not them <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah you know it, yeah. um we had rebecca godfrey's book so that definitely helped just i mean even before i got the role i, re I read it and you know you highlight everything that you can grasp from it there what there wasn't really much that you could search up but you know they had a few documents um but just taking you know we had amazing people to work with that really answered right. a lot of our questions that we had yeah you know the thing about it this happened so much way before social media that you think about like the amount of pressure the kids go through in high school you know, and, and, you know, what they're faced with, especially when you're a loner or, and it's all about identity, you know? Uh, you know, everybody's trying to find themselves to be themselves. You yeah. know, you guys are fairly still young. You know, at what point did you say, you know, obviously you're in this business, you're actors, uh, but what, what point did you say, okay, this is what I want to do and I'm comfortable with what I want to do and who I am? At the same time, you also got to portray the character too. You know what I mean? So if you got to go there, you got to go there to make sure that, the story is told in in the right light and to give justice to uh rena verk so it's like i really just kind of just embodied it and made sure like when i was on set i was locked in and i was able to give my best performance and i'm I'm sure the same with you know, everybody else yeah. so um for me it was you know it is hard being a teenager and i feel like bringing in those aspects really mm -hmm. helped to relate the character to many people um like as you said everybody's just trying to find their identity and they do it in bad way sometimes but i feel like it brings awareness to how you treat each other and yeah. you know your actions have consequences and i feel like this show definitely does that yeah this crew is all about the 90s and the 90s rap music you know how oh, much yeah. of a fan are you guys are the rap music of the 90s is there a particular fan everybody loves biggie but is there a particular fan you know it's like is there a particular music from the 90s you appreciate more more so um, now than before I've, I've always just kind of messed with 90s music you know my dad you know we would we would listen to 90s music when i was younger and go on long car rides with some 90s music playing so he would he really showed me a lot of like older stuff like i was saying um even earlier like goody mob um outcast you know all of those guys so yeah yeah you know when you're working on this series and it's very intense obviously people are going to watch it for those who know the story people are going to be intrigued for those who are picking it up on it um what did you learn as actors after doing so you know based on your performance that you can take on to whatever project you do next yeah for me it was it was a growing experience um yeah. i'd never been away from my home for like that long but um you know, working with such an amazing people that you really had chemistry with really helped and you fed off of each other, you learned things from each other. Um, you understand, you know, the business and um, separating your character between yourself. Yeah, um, really what, what Chloe was saying. I think, I think she <laughs> kind of hit that pretty at all. <laughs> you know, and then like I said, you know, it, it was a crew, you know, so what did you guys do to have fun if you've been away from us? If you're away from home for a period of time, and if you don't know each other, what did you guys do to bond? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think, uh, you know, me, me and Chloe went up snowboarding sometimes, yeah. which was which was really fun. For but we, for, no, for both of us, for both of us. All right, I tried to teach her. There was definitely times I had to leave her and go yeah. somewhere on my own. I could, I could but, not stop. <laughs> and that mountain was pretty damn big. It was, so it was, it was. Like a small mountain. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of that, and you know, we, we had a little group chat too, so we'd, we would talk a lot and we would all hang out and, Yeah. um, sometimes even go shopping, but chemistry is just so, so important when you're on camera, like you need it, you know, Yeah. so to really just kind of portray the characters in the best way possible. I know this is based on a true story, but is there a message to get out of this when people are watching it? Especially in today's world, you know, there's a lot that's even though it's set in the 90s, but you can kind of relate it to now and it'd be different because obviously I mean, modern technologies and cell phones and social medias will take play in this. But is there a message people can get from watching this? I mean, kind of just to raise awareness for bullying in general, you know, this, this story tells a really good job of that. And, you know, a lot of mean words that kids, kids say nowadays. And I mean, a lot of them, you know, they're mean to others because of troubled problems they have in their own household or just in general. So really just raising awareness for, you know, bullying. Yeah, I feel like I hope it sits with people. I hope people like Mm reflect -hmm. on themselves as they watch this because, you know, it is relatable. We all try to find who we are and sometimes we do things that we shouldn't do just just to find our identity. And I feel like Right. awareness of, you know, kindness of others. Everybody needs kindness. So I feel like it's something people should take away from it. Mm -hmm. Well said. Congrats on the roles. Congrats on the performances. Keep Thank it you. going. Take care. I appreciate Thank it. you. You too. Well, some are from Black from TV. Here you are playing these roles that obviously some are familiar with, some are about to get to know. What did you do to embody the character so that when people see it, they know, okay, that is her. You know, she's playing it right, or that is not her. You know, besides the script, is there any other research did you do? Vertica? <laughs> Yeah, for me, I really enjoyed reading um, Rebecca's book. I think it was really important to understand her viewpoint on not just Rena, but the Rena's friends, you know, her family. And I think it was really important for me to understand that. And reading um, Manjeet, Rena's father's book that he wrote for her was also super important for me as well to understand who she was. And you, Ayana? I think that um, even though Dusty is a very reserved character, I think... Uh, her ways are very clear. I think that we all have like a quiet observer in our lives. She's a bit of a wallflower. And I really enjoyed that about playing and, and developing her as a character. You know, I was just some, some people describe this, uh, the word bullying in this series. Sometimes you don't see it. It's not the type of bullying you see often. You know, sometimes, you know, with, Vertica, with Rena's character, you know, she wasn't somewhat bullied all the time because she wanted to integrate herself in this crew, you know. So what is it about, I guess, peer pressure that enables people's weaknesses in a way? Because you you see it here in all, in all sorts of uh, different, from different people, from different, you know, from different views. There's a sense of weakness of people wanting to be accepted and identify with somebody as opposed to being out as a loner. Yeah, I think for me, I think Rena just really wanted to find those friends to call her own. And I think, you know, with her having her own family, she was surrounded with people that didn't have that family and that love and that support. So I think that really kind of influenced her to almost feel like she doesn't want that family anymore. So I think that peer pressure and all those things involved really did lead up to Mm -hmm. what happened. And, it, you know, with Dusty, she's somewhat like a, at the crossroads, you know, she wants to be friends, she doesn't want to be friends, you don't know where her mind is at at times, you know, how did you want to best play her outside of the book, you know, so is there any other research or was it we're just going by the interpretation of what's in the book? Mm. Mm. I mean there's not much of Dusty in the book and in our narrative she's an, an amalgamation of various characters so um, there's a lot of space or there was a lot of space to kind of create Dusty and um, Quinn and Samir are very generous with their collaborative kind of ways in, um, in helping us develop our characters which I really appreciated I think that it It's a difficult space to play because as myself, I just want her to make the decision I want her to make. But I think that the um, that her journey is such a heavy one and it's it feels even somehow even bigger than, than the decision she's actually making. This is kind of her whole life. Who is she going to be as a human being? Um, and that felt very important. When you play these roles, it, it could take a toll, you know, is there, was there a position where um, you learned something from doing this series that you can take on to whatever project you do next? Was it be the way you acted? Was it be, you know, a storytelling? Is there anything you picked up here that you can, you know, take on to whatever project you do next? Yeah, for me, I think we were just 
all surrounded by such an amazing cast and a crew. And I think, you know, Quinn, Samir, Geeta, I think all of them, they were just all so supportive. And that's definitely something that I'm going to take on because, you know, I think it's really important to surround yourself with people that you trust and who you feel safe with. So really just taking that on to future projects is super important for me. Mm -hmm. And you, Ayana? I, 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 um, was very lucky Quinn um let me shadow her as a director and I um was kind of like interviewing the crew and figuring out what it is about storytelling that semi justifies the horrendous work hours <laughs> of the <laughs> filming and um hearing people's passion for storytelling is something that just makes me feel really alive and as a writer as an aspiring director um it's something that I want to experience and look at and explore from multiple angles so I think Anything I do next, I just want to find more about what it is about storytelling that humans are so drawn to. Congrats on the roles. Congrats on the performances. I can't wait to see what you guys do next, but we got the show to promote first. Take care. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Wilson Miles from Black Women TV. Hey, folks, how's it going? Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, Quinn, what went into adapting this book? And, you know, how much did you work with uh, Rebecca before she passed away to get her story out here? Uh, I worked with Rebecca for almost three years uh, after I read her book and sort of had the first thought to make her a character in the show so that we could really kind of unpack her own perspective on the crime. Um, yeah, it was a it was a really beautiful collaboration that I had with her and it was super informative. <laughs> you know, the the back and forth in terms of to have to get into know Rena's background. Uh, it's good telling, but, you know, it's always a different storytelling. You know, what went into that aspect? Is that also part of the book, Samir? Uh, that much of that is um, from Rena's father's book, which we also optioned um, in adapting the story. Um, and also I had some conversations with Manjeet himself, um, just hearing about, you know, various anecdotes uh, about their family life. Um, but I'd say a, a majority of it, just because we didn't have Rena with us to tell us anything about her kind of emotional interior that was a that was largely Quinn and myself and and our writers room um just putting our heads together to try to kind of get in touch with who Rena might have been and try to put on screen just universal uh stories about being a kind of bullied child in, in middle school and something that we thought that like just anybody who had has had an adolescence might uh relate to you know, when you look at this, uh, there's different ways of bullying. You know, that's what you get. That's what I got out of this. You know, there's there's that bully that's constant being bullied, and then there's bullied into being part of a group through peer pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what I see here. You know, so when you're combining two books, you know, are we looking to tell a story, but also in a way humanizing every character so that we don't see them as one side? Absolutely, sure. yeah, and 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 in telling in using multiple books, it allowed us to tell the story from multiple perspectives and also question each perspective within the world of the story itself. It was so but, interesting to get to read about like a specific moment or experience quite literally through two different perspectives and, and see how the perspective of a writer really shapes the way that you feel. I think that we went into this wanting to bring a really radical empathy to the approach of the show and to really being able to understand exactly how something like this happened through bringing a lot of empathy to the storytelling. You know, when you have real life characters and then you have the actors playing them, uh, are you getting an idea as to who these people are outside of the books? So that when people who knew these people are, they're getting it. So when somebody sees Rebecca at play by Raleigh, they're getting to see how Rebecca was for those who really knew her, as well as the other characters who are real life characters. I think, you know, in my mind, it's like each character represents like a core truth about the real people. Some of the characters are composites of like a few people. Some of them are closer to truth. I think Rebecca is very much, you know, she's inspired by the real person. I spent a lot of time getting to know her, but she's also semi-fictionalized and she was a part of that. I think it was about creating a character that represented like her approach to storytelling and the way she saw the world. And that's how we kind of came into mm -hmm. all of the characters. Yeah. You know, we're getting a lot of these true crime series, uh, and I wonder, uh, is it is there a message out of this people can get? This is going back in the 90s, way before, obviously, social media, modern technology. Mm -hmm. But when people get this, obviously, there's a certain message you can get out of this for those who are young and going to watch this. 
is there something you want people to get from watching this? Yeah, I think that uh, for us to get to a kinder world where this never happens, it is going to take everybody. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, you know, obviously I, I was intrigued watching the episode for episode as others will be as well. So congrats on this. Let's see what more you got down the road. I'll pay attention. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Mm-hmm.